Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this channel, Everyday Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts involved in data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I am going to solve this question on lead code regarding customer order frequency and try to walk you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. This question has been asked in Amazon as well as Facebook interviews in the last one year a number of times. Okay, so let's jump right in. We are given one table called customers with three different columns, customer ID, name and country, and these are the data types. Customer ID is the primary key for this table. This table contains information about the customers in the company. We are also given a second table called product with three different columns again, product ID, description and price. Product ID is the primary key for this table. This table contains information on products in the company and price is the product cost. Okay. We are also given a third table called orders with five different columns, order ID, customer ID, product ID, order date, quantity, right? And these are the data types. Order ID is the primary key for this table. This table contains information on customer orders. Customer ID is the ID of the customer who bought quantity of the products or who, who bought this much amount of quantity of a particular product with product ID, this. Order date is in date format with year, 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 month, date, right? And this is the format of the date when the order was shipped. We are asked to write a SQL query to report the customer ID and customer name of customers who have spent at least $100 in each month of June and July. Now here, one thing to keep in mind is that it says uh, at least 100 in each month. Now some of you might think that okay if hundred dollars each month then in total in july and uh, june and july uh, there should be at least two hundred dollars right but if you go by that logic right so it can be possible that a person spent three hundred dollars in june but didn't spend anything in july right so if you go by sum of both the uh, months should be greater than 200 then in that case that will return you a wrong answer so you need to check in June as well as in July, it should be greater than $100 each month, right? The order of the result doesn't matter. Okay, so let's go through this example. Customers table, products table, and then the orders table. Now, if you see in June and July, right? So for example, customer ID one, right? So customer ID one in June bought a product ID 10, one right so and that is of three hundred dollars so in june he bought more or the or the customer uh, bought more than hundred dollars worth of uh, product right in july the person bought uh, product id 20 and 30 product id 20 is price 10 and quantity one so 10 plus product id 30 is price 45 and 2 right so 45 into 2 is 90 90 plus 10 is 100 so customer id 1 whose name was Winston has satisfied this condition that he uh, that Winston has bought Ju uh, at least $100 worth of products both in June and July of 2020. But if you see for any other uh, customer, right? So for customer ID 2 in June uh, 2 and like the person has brought $600 worth of uh, products but in july so 10 quantity of product id 4 right so product id 40 10 quantities so 2 into 10 20 so this will not be in the output and for this so this is worthless because this is may of 2020 so in june and obviously since it only has data for june and not of july so uh, you know you like this is not going to be in the output as well like just by looking at it right so the only output should be customer id 1 and winston so you see, if we had, you know, uh, employed the logic that sum of both the months should be greater than uh, 200, then two will also come in your customer ID, but that would be a wrong answer, right? And that would be a wrong output as well. So what we can do is the first thing that we should do in this case is that for each of the customer ID, Right. So we firstly, we need to make sure that uh, we are only included uh, where year of this order date is 2020 and month is either six or seven, that is June or July. And then what we can do is we can, uh, you know, the first thing that since here in the orders table, you only have the quantity and you need you need the price as well. So we can join these two tables, right? Because price multiplied by quantity would be the amount of amount spent, right? Uh, on each of the orders 
and then we can keep only those rows where you know uh, year is 2020 and month belongs to six or seven and then we can go from there right so let me go ahead and start building the queries so from this orders table right so from the orders table aliased as o let's left join product table aliased as p on what we are uh, joining on o dot product id is equal to p dot product id so this will give us the price right so for uh, the different products it will also uh, give us the price of the of the product now what we can do is we can only keep those rows let's keep only those rows where year of the order date and order date belongs to which uh, table orders right so o dot order date is equal to 2020 and the month part of o dot order date right is in since there are two values it should take uh, either june or july so it should be six or seven right so both both should be there uh, where year is equal to 2020 and month is in june or july then what we can do is we can group by right so we can group by the customer id customer id is in orders table so o dot customer id we can group by the year as well we can group by the month as well right so basically what i'm trying to do is trying to calculate for each of the customers in 2020 and different months right so different months basically june and july what is this amount they spent right so we can group by customer id year and then we can group by the month part of it right so month and then what we can do is we can return this right so select return this entire all these three columns right and let's 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 alias this as you know let's this is as year let's make this as month right because we are going to store this in a common table expression so like let's make this readable so as month and finally we need to uh, know the total spent right so what we can do is we can calculate the product of quantity and the price now quantity is in which table orders table right so o dot quantity multiplied by price is in product table right so p dot price and once you do that you just basically sum right because for each customer in uh, in a particular year that is 2020 and in each month we need to have how much the person spent right in that particular month so we sum it right and let's alias this as um let's say spent right so let me just go ahead and run this part right to, to make sure like uh, and demonstrate like what this is going to basically return right okay so if you see here here we have four different columns right customer id year month and spend and customer id one in year 2020 and june so basically june of 2020 spent 300 in july of 2020 spent 100 for customer id two june of 2020 600 july of 2020 20 dollars right and for uh, this one customer id 3 june of 2020 110 dollars right so you see now we have a table basically which shows for different customers in month of june and july what was their total spend right now what we can do is we can store this entire thing in a common table expression so with cte as now what we need to do is we need to make sure that the spent each month is greater than hundred dollars right so what we can do is from this common table expression what we can what we need to do we need to only keep those rows where the spend is greater than or equal to 100 right why greater than or equal to 100 because it says at least 100 now but 
this only makes sure that the spend was greater than or equal to hundred dollars right how do we make sure that each month the spend was greater than or equal to a uh, hundred right now if you see here we already made sure that our common table expression is only going to have only two months right so six or seven right and year 2020 this we made sure here only now if i you know count the number of so after you know uh, only including those rows where the spend was greater than or equal to hundred dollars right if i uh, only in, uh, if i only include those rows where both six and seven were present right or basically the count of the month was two because only two can be present and it says each month of june and july needs to be checked right so if i do group by right customer id and then having since we are you know uh, filtering on based of an aggregate so having count of month equal to two right so if i do that so basically what this is doing so from that common table expressions where we had you know customer id month year month and spend for the first thing that will it will do is it will only keep those rows where the spend is at least hundred dollars then it will uh, group by the customer id and count that are there two months in that right for that particular customer id if yes then it will return so let's return the customer id now if we only had to return customer id our work would have been done here but we also need customer name and customer name is in the first table right so customer table so what we can do is we can again you know store this entire thing in a common table expression so let's uh, write ct2 as this thing right and finally what we can do is from cte2 aliased as c we can join the customers table right so customers table let's alias it as cu on c dot customer id is equal to cu dot customer id and then what do we need to return we need to return the customer id and the name right so we can return customer id and name from any of uh, we can return the customer id from both the tables like ct2 as well as customers so let's return from ct2 right so return c dot customer id and since the name is in the customers table which is aliased as cu so you write cu dot name okay so this looks good let me go ahead and run this to see what happens so yeah this is accepted our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases so yeah this passes all the test cases and this is how we do it again it looks a big solution but it actually if you follow the logic it is not it, it is very easy it's kind of a lengthy but it's very easy maybe this can be done without using co common table expressions let me know in the comment section if you find a better and efficient way of doing this as well or you uh, you know are able to guess a logic that can you know drastically reduce our calculations as well so yeah uh, this is how we do it uh, let me know if this video is useful and until then i will see you guys in the next video